Hey everybody, it's Angelo with Angelo's Workbench. This week on Angelo's Workbench, the 67 Impala Street Machine is going to get a little chrome trim. Stick around. So the Impala is ready for its chrome trim. Now you'll notice that... Um, I left the door handles on. I had said I was going to shave the door handles like they did. And I decided against that because I wanted to have some chrome trim. I was looking at the box art and um, and they chose to paint over all of the chrome trim. And they there's only chrome trim around the door and the window and then a little piece on the front. And then also the little piece on the back. And I want, oh, and around the back window, of course. And I want just a little bit more chrome trim. So, so I want to leave the chrome trim pieces that are on the bottom of the car. Uh, and I can show you that best here. These chrome trim pieces here along the bottom of the car, I want those chrome. I want to do the wheel arches chrome. So I want that chrome line along the bottom of the car. Uh, and so I was thinking about that. And with this, I was thinking that I really want to keep the door handles chrome. So, so I left them there, and they're going to get chromed. So it's kind of a street machine plus. I didn't, like, like well, I should say a street machine minus. Um, I didn't want to shave the door handles. So I'm going to leave the door handles there because I want to do this chrome trim as well. Um, so what we're going to do now is, and this is dry, nice and shiny and dry. So this is ready to go. Um, it has had plenty of time to cure because this is motorcycle season, and I've been extremely busy with Angelo's motorcycle, which I will casually mention. Uh, shameless cross promotion. Uh, if you are into motorcycles, I have another motorcycle channel that I've just started this year called Angelo's Motorcycle. And on that, I um, I talk about motorcycle safety. I talk about gear. I do motorcycle reviews, gear reviews, rides um, all over the northeastern United States. Um, it's a new channel, so there's just, just the beginnings of the content. Um, I have a couple really cool videos coming up. Six motorcycles, 600 miles, one long weekend is going to be a buyer's guide where I ride all six of my motorcycles 100 miles and explore in the different genres and talk about them. I also have a feature coming up called The Art of the Swerve, uh, where we're going to talk about swerving a motorcycle in an emergency situation, how to do that, um, and how to do that safely and effectively. And so here is a small commercial that I filmed to check out Angelo's motorcycle. Okay, now we're back from that. Thank you for checking that out. Let's uh, continue. I, you'll see that I am just using my yellow frog tape to mask off this chrome trim. Um, and I am just burnishing it down with my fingernail. And there, that is ready to go. Now, I'm not going to worry about this end because that is, in fact, chrome trim for around the wheel arch. So what I'm going to do is I might be able to get a twofer out of this. Out of this piece of tape. I might be able to just leave that on there. Look at how nice the engraving line is on this uh, kit. Um, I can probably now just very gently and carefully. I always leave a pinky on the body. There we go. Just to trim that piece of tape. And of course, I didn't get it all right here in the corner. Sometimes you just have to go over it twice. And I always start in the middle of the arc and work my way around. So I'll do it in both directions. Because I always find that if I start at an end, it doesn't work. I'm going to have to this time because... My pinky was getting in the way. I'm always nervous about this because one stray uh, move of that razor blade and uh, and you then have this big scratch in your model car body. 
Might need a new blade, because this should be cutting that tape a lot easier. It's requiring a little too much pressure for my liking. And blades are cheap enough, right? You get like a ton of them for 10 bucks or, or less. So make sure you go back and burnish this with a fingernail or, um, or I like to sometimes use a toothpick. Because if you don't push the tape down into that corner, you will get bleed, even with this yellow frog tape. This yellow frog tape is fantastic, but it is very easy to get um, bleed through. And so this piece of this single piece of tape is is getting a lot of uh, a lot of use. I am now um, masking off the the rear chrome trim as well. Um, get my tweezers going here. Pick off this piece of tape. Perfect. Give it a little burnish. See, yeah, it's a little uneven there. I'll fix that when I go back in. But um, now, if I'm going to do that, now I have to be mindful of this end. There we go. Perfecto. Nope. As soon as I did that, the tape doubled over on itself. There we go. All right. I wonder if I can do the same thing with this front wheel arch and it appears that I will be able to. I'll have the whole side of this car masked. Boy, the body engraving lines on this car are absolutely outstanding. Look at how perfect that and I didn't scribe any of this. Like I said when I was prepping the body, um I said, hey, uh, you know, the engraving line, like, I'm not going to scribe these panel lines. These panel lines look fantastic. And and sure enough, um, they were. They are fantastic. Now that I'm into the build and, you know, masking the trim, um, I'm finding that, yes, these panel lines are more than sufficient to to enable me to go in with my blade and follow the groove very easily for the masking of these wheel arch chrome trims, which is not easy to do on a lot of model kits. Um, these these lines for these wheel arches, I don't know if they get forgotten about or they're just there and they don't get um, uh, they don't get scribed deep enough by the guys who are creating these molds. But a lot of times the the wheel arch trim is so faint, I end up having to just do it manually or rescribe. And uh, yeah, that was good. But this kit, they are deep, they are pronounced, very easy to scribe and follow. And get my toothpick in there and get a nice good burnish. That is going to be absolutely perfect. That looks that looks great. So I need a couple of things. I need a little tiny piece back here on the top here. And now, so this one, yeah, just drop that anywhere, Angelo. So now this one, the um the piece of tape didn't quite go all the way to the line where I want it. So I want to back it up a little bit. There we go. And I'll burnish it down with my fingernail. And that looks great. Here's a spare piece that will serve me well right there. Here's another spare piece that'll look good right there. Just want to give myself enough room um, to uh, be able to spray the side of the car without uh, causing an issue. And I'm just doing down low right now. I'm not going to mask the whole car and... And, uh, and spray the entire car. I, I do it piecemeal. That's just the way I do it. Um, I do one little bit at a time. In fact, doing the wheel and the bottom at the same time is kind of unusual for me. Ordinarily, I would not. But just the way the masking ended up going, um, I, I have... Uh, it was easy to do. So there we have it. So now there is a little piece of part that is of car that is going to stay pink at the bottom here. Um, the chrome trim is up a little bit on the car. 
So I need to keep that part pink. And now, of course, that is going to cover this little piece of wheel trim here. So I am just going to cut the tape here. There we go. And then just fold it back over. And there you have it. We now have the rear chrome trim done, the wheel trim done, this middle chrome trim done, the front chrome trim done, except for that little piece right there, which we're going to get right now. So, and if I do this right, I can't quite get it all the way because that line still has a curvature to it, so the straight edge of the tape wouldn't look right. But now I just have one little tiny piece that I have to come in with the razor blade and remove. There we go. And now my little tweezer. Just take that off, burnish it down with my toothpick or my finger or both. And there we have it. And see that little tiny piece of fender right there? I am gonna get paint on that. And there we go. Of course, even if I get paint on it, this is the 2K clear. Um, if I get paint on it, it's really not the big deal because it will buff right off um, very easily. And so I'm just going to cover this little leading edge of this hood just in case. And now that is ready for the spray booth. So let's head to the spray booth and spray this, and uh, and then we'll come back, we'll take the tape off, and see what it looks like. And as if by magic, we have magically appeared in the spray booth, the beauty of video editing. Today I am shooting Molotow Liquid Chrome. Uh, this is the same stuff that's in the pens. Uh, you can get, these are pen refills. Um, and this stuff uh, sprays out of an airbrush very nicely. Um, so rather than taking the ink out of the pen, you can just buy the refill and uh, and go from there. So I now have the airbrush fired up. I'm just gonna do a little test here. And there is silver coming out, which is great. And so let's try this bottom piece first. There we go. And um, this is kind of strange. this is just looking like silver it is not looking like chrome so i am thinking that there is perhaps something wrong with my molotow that maybe this has gone bad so stay tuned i'll be right back let me figure out what's going on with this okay and we're back and my molotow seems to have gone bad or something um so now i am spraying spastics chrome That is looking a little more like the part. But either way, I'm okay with that. We'll be good. Okay, let's uh, take off our tape and see how we did. Good so far. I was looking for that along with the door handle and then around the windows and this will look great okay so now I'm gonna do this back window um, simply because it uh, is so easy because it's just square <laughs> like it's all square so this is going to be um, there might be a slight rounded edge on that corner but I don't think that um, I don't think that you would pick it up the difference um, 
so I want to be very careful and not rub off any of the chrome. The only thing that stinks about chrome trim is, um, is it is very fragile. So I am, uh, you have to be very careful that you don't rub it off. Some of it is more fragile than others. What I'm trying to do is get that center one and then I can sweep the edges up a little just by bending it. There we go. What I might do is I might go in with another piece of tape here. There we go. Pick up that little bit of, there's a slight curvature in that bottom one. And these side ones are just straight. Ah, oh, it's gonna look so good. And the chrome is really gonna pop with this pink. I mean, pink and gray, pink and silver, you know, have a, they, they look really good together anyway. So, uh, so there's that. So let's go to the booth. Okay, let's get this back window a little bit of paint on it. Just gonna burnish that tape down a little bit. It looked like it popped up. Now I'm just spraying a little bit of air. Just air going now. All right. Now, we'll go back to the bench to peel it off this time. Okay, so now we'll get this tape off of here and see how we did. Oh, that looks perfect. Oh yeah, very nice. We've got some trim. It's actually coming out a little bit less than chrome and I think there's something with the paint. Um, and, but I'm kind of liking, however it's coming out, I'm liking the way it is. So I'm going to do all of the parts now before it fixes itself and starts being chrome. Um, because I am good with that. I, I like the way that looks. So, uh, so this is good. Good, good, good. And, um, and I really like, this is exactly what I was going for. The silver that I wanted down the body and then with the door handles that's going to look A-OK. -okay. So, so now I'm going to do this side. I'll mask off and spray this side. And, uh, and then we'll come back for when I do the uh, windshield. Stay tuned. OK, so off camera, I have masked and sprayed the opposite side. So now both sides are done, and the back window is done. Now I have decided that it is time to do the front window. So the front window, um, for the sides, the sides are very easy. So for the sides, I just Put a piece like this, and that handles that side. The sides are just uh, small, short pieces, so they're very easy to just come in here and get this. And there is that. So now that side is done. Now the top, this angle, I find that I am able to, with the tape, the yellow tape, that I am able to bend the tape and get the curvature, right? Because it buckles on itself and makes wrinkles up above on the roof where it doesn't matter. Where I'm masking stays smooth and flat. And then I just do that. And this side needs a little repair because it wasn't quite right. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries. There we go. So now I've got it. Now I've never been able to do it down here because as you're bending it, the tape won't work because it needs to stretch instead of wrinkle, right? So what I use is I use pinstripe tape. I'll pick up rolls of it when I see it on sale at Walmart or Advance Auto or even Amazon, or even if it's not on sale, it's cheap enough. You get a whole roll of pinstripe tape is enough to do like a real automobile. This is enough to do model cars for some time. I just now started this roll, and the roll I had prior, um, 
wow, had to have been at least five or six years old. Um, so now what I do is you just get it started. You have to get a little bit of it stuck on the body first. Now this is vinyl. So if you pull it and you stretch it and you bend it, it stays perfectly flat and it also makes a very, very good seal. So there, now I have the curvature done very well. And now I'm gonna go back and fix this end because it wasn't quite stuck. And there it is. So now that is, and I'm burnishing it down with my fingernail. Burnish everything, right? Constantly burnish, burnish, burnish. Okay, so now that is there, so now all I have to do is I'll take my yellow tape and fill in the blank, right? So what I'll do is I'll go across like this. And typically three pieces gets it done. And then like this. And all I'm doing is just backing up this white tape, covering the pink that the white didn't cover. see there's a little wrinkle in the white tape there and I'm just burnishing that out with my finger so there now that is ready for spraying in the spray booth so I'll go spray it in the spray booth and I'll be right back and we're back from the spray booth so now I just take this white and peel it off look at how nice and clean that line is that is good stuff good stuff now I'll take this one the yellow tape always does a great job and peel that one off that one off and there is the windshield trim looking good looks the part so now we've just got to do those side trims and the door handles and then this body can be set aside and uh and we'll be ready for when we are ready for final assembly i have a few emblems to do um i noticed that there is uh, there's an emblem there on the trunk there's a trunk uh, lock cylinder there that'll have to be silver um, and then obviously the door handles and the door lock cylinders. And then there's some little emblems on the front fender. I might have some photo etch metal that I could drop on there in stock. I'll see if I have some extras left over from one of my old Corvette kits or something that I had photo etch for. Um, see if I can pop a photo etch metal emblem on there. If not, I'll just, if not, I'll just paint it. You know, we can do that. And then some under hood details. I'm going to leave the firewalls pink because I, I like that. Um, and I'll just detail out the, um, excess stuff we've got a windshield washer jug there we've got some wires and some hoses and stuff that can all be black um, just to enhance the the look of what's under the hood uh, and then this vent here along here i'll just hit that with a little bit of a wash a little black wash and um, and the body is rapidly approaching done uh, and and looking great what a fantastic kit this is this old amt 67 impala street machine does not get the props that it deserves i mean with the crisp gold mold lines on this on this body and how it looks and the parts it comes with and that fantastic motor like this kit um i'm gonna have to get some more of these because because i'm having fun and i could see you know doing a couple other custom hot rod style ones other than the magenta monster here so uh, so we'll be back stay tuned okay so now where it's time to mask off this one side so let's go ahead and get that done um, the first thing I like to do is mask off the bottom because there's no chrome trim on the bottom And if there is I'm not painting it. So um, It doesn't appear that there is any on this car So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover that door like that And then I'm going to cover this where this window frame ends and meets the door Like that I need to get up a little bit more. There we go very good and then I'm going to finish off the top of the door making sure that no chrome trim gets on here and it doesn't have to be pretty or wrinkle free it just has to be there so that piece kind of folded over that's okay I'm gonna run with it so now the side again is easy because it is just straight so we want to preserve that little tiny piece of pink that is in between the door frame and the window frame. Like so. 
Now all I have to do is this curvature here. And you guessed it, I'm going for the pinstripe tape. Because the way it curves, I need the flexibility of this vinyl in order to be able to follow that curve line flatly without any wrinkles. So again, the most important part is to get some of it bonded to the body. So I'm picking a straight part because once you have it bonded to the body, then you can pull on it and stretch it and bend it to the curvature. If you try and do the curve part first, the tape, it's like herding cats, right? The tape just doesn't wanna work with you. So by sticking this part here, then I could pull and stretch and look at that nice smooth arc I have perfectly to the concave of the door frame. And then that protects that. And then there's one little tiny piece at the end I can see right there. And so now that I have the vinyl stuck, now I'm going to go in with my yellow tape and finish this up. And the tape will not bend. If I make a relief cut here, I might be able to get it to. There we go. But at the end of the day, don't be stingy with the tape. You know, don't try to be stingy with the tape. If you need another piece of tape, tear off another piece of tape. And that is uh, ready to go. This is ready to paint. So I'll go give it a squirt and I'll be right back. Okay, fresh from the spray booth, we now have, hopefully, a painted door trim. That all looks very good so far. Now you wanna be very careful when you're pulling out of here that you don't damage the paintwork that you just did. Perfect. All right, that looks great. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy with this, very happy. And I have just finished masking the back end so I could just get that top piece in there. And I did this just by putting masking tape on there, burnishing it in and trimming it. And now I'm gonna go spray it in the spray booth. Okay, so now this has been sprayed. Ooh, that looks good. I wasn't sure about my quality of my mask job on this one. Nope, nailed it. There it is. That is going to look fantastic. Except for that big silver fingerprint I just got on that bumper. <laughs> but that'll easily buff off with a little bit of polishing compound and a Q-tip after. I don't wanna touch it for now because obviously now my fingers are contaminated with silver paint from the tape. So now I've got to go clean my hands before I touch anything else. One fingerprint can be a tremendous problem. Not on the 2K clear, but on anything else, it would be a big issue. So, I'll be right back. So while the body is off curing, I'm gonna spray the silver and aluminum parts here. Get these ready to go. These shocks have a nice little nub on the bottom that I can attach my little alligator clips to. I think just about all these parts have something that I can attach onto, except for this alternator. But this alternator here has a uh, hole in the back. This guy's got a, a mounting point that I can attach onto. There we go. And this guy here has a mounting point that I can attach on to. And even if that ends up not being a mounting point, that'll be a nice point to detail, a little bit of a different color. Um, same thing with this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to detail this a slightly different color afterward. So I'll just put my mounting thing right there. So all of these parts actually are now able to be mounted on a steep. So let's go ahead to the spray booth. Okay, I'm using some Tamiya lacquer aluminum paint here, silver. So it's 
give that a little shot. That looks great. I'll put a little wash in there and that'll uh, uh, bring out the details in that uh, shock absorber. So you'll be able to see the, the little lines between the springs quite nicely. So now we just do that times three more times. thing about having all the parts on sticks is I don't have to do any of the masking tape where I spray one side and then spray the other side and let it dry in the dehydrator. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of time but it does add some time. This way being able to just do all of the parts on the stick. Makes everything easier. It looks great. Done and done. We'll be going to uh, detailing and final assembly before you know it. We're making good progress here. The only parts I have left to paint are the steel parts, like the exhaust and things like that, and those always go on a stick. That's that part for the top of the motor. I'm contemplating part of that being anodized. We'll see, maybe. Quite possible. I think part of that is anodized. I think that'll be, that'll be really, really good. The other thing that I want to do this color that I've just decided is I want to do the dry shaft in this color because the exhaust is going to be steel. That's very prominent on the underside of the car. So I want the drive shaft to be this color so that there is some variation between, uh, between the parts on the underside. So that takes care of the silver parts. Next up, steel. Okay, I have all the steel parts here and I have steel loaded in the airbrush. I'm using uh, testers flat metallic steel, the enamel, and then what I do is I thin it with lacquer thinner. You spray it through the airbrush, and the lacquer thinner does two things. It makes it so that it will go through the airbrush, um, obviously, because regular enamel paint will not go through an airbrush. But then it also makes it cure a lot faster. But I get that typical enamel paint smell that reminds me of being a kid, which is kind of wonderful. So now this I will pop into the dehydrator. While it is in the dehydrator, dehydrating and curing so that we can flip them over and spray the other side, we will spray the exhaust pipes. Steel is my go-to color for exhaust pipes. It's all 360 degrees. There we go, and I'm just about out of paint. So I'm going to refill my airbrush and come right back. Okay, just like that, my airbrush is refilled. This one is the muffler. I'm gonna make sure we get all four sides of the muffler. And I always have a tendency to forget that little part right there where the pipe joins the muffler. There we go. That looks cool. After this, all of the parts will be painted for the kit. We will be ready to move on to detailing and assembly. The detailing and assembly is where I 
if I have a part that's multiple colors, I will mask and spray that other color or detail paint that other color. If there's a silver part that has some black on it or a black part that has some silver on it, that's what I call detail painting. And then also, obviously, assembly. I usually do them at the same time because sometimes you need to assemble a part before you detail paint it, or sometimes you want to do it before. It doesn't, it, you know, it varies. So now these are cured from the dehydrator, so I'm going to flip them over. And I always put them so that the finished side gets done second. So that if the tape leaves any marks on the paint, it's not a big deal. The tape usually doesn't. But if it does, then you'll never know. Because it's on the side that is hidden. Okay, so now these parts are ready to be painted from all four sides, just like I did the other parts. There we go. Boy, the smell really takes me back to uh, childhood. The smell of those testers enamel paints. It's funny how, uh, how a smell like that, you know, really takes you back. I remember painting these things with a brush when I was eight years old. And there's those parts. Done. Done and done. So I will clean the airbrush and we will go back to the bench. And we've got the trims done on the uh, on the body here. And uh, they're looking great. As well as we have all of the silver and aluminum and steel parts painted and curing. Ready to go back in the container for uh, for storage till final assembly and detailing. So that's going to wrap up this week's video on the 67 Impala Street Machine. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share, ask me questions. I love to hear from you guys. Anytime I get to uh, share information with you, uh, I have a great time. So don't forget to do all those things. Also, check me out on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. All is Angelo's Workbench right here. You can see all that information. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.